All right. So next, we will show that the operation of multiplication is associative over the complex numbers. So let z sub i be a complex number. Then the product of z1 with the quantity z2 times z3 is the same as the quantity z1 times z2 times z3. And so as uh, the operation is associative, uh, it does not matter how we group them, and so we'll be able to omit uh, parentheses altogether. So proof. Again, let the complex numbers z sub i be the ordered pair x sub i, y sub i. Then the product of z sub 1 with the quantity z2 times z3 is the product of two ordered pairs. The first ordered pair is x1, y1. And the second ordered pair is x2 times x3 minus y2 2 times y3 as the real part, and the imaginary part is x2 times y3 plus x3 times y2. All right, so let's first look at the real part of this product. So the real part of the product of z1 with the quantity z2 times z3 is x1 times the uh, quantity x2, x3, minus y2, y3, minus y sub 1 times the quantity x2, y3, plus x3, y2. And so we have x1 times x2 times x3, minus x1 times y2 times y3, minus y1 times x2 times y3 minus y1 times x3 times y2. So notice that the term x sub 3 appears in the first and last term, and that the uh, number y sub 3 appears in the two inner terms, and so that's how we will group them. And so we have x1 times x2 times x3 minus y1 times x3 times y2 minus the quantity x1, y2, y3 plus y1, x3, whoops, plus y1, x2, y3. So we can, out of the first term, we can factor out x3, and out of the second term, we can factor out y uh, sub 3, and so we have the quantity x1, x2 minus y1, y2 times x3 minus the quantity x1, uh, y2, plus y1, x2, all times y3. And so we can now recognize that this is the real part of the product of the quantity z1 times z2 with z3. OK, so next we look at the imaginary part. The imaginary part of the product of z1 with the quantity z2, z3 is x sub 1 times the quantity x2, y3 plus y2, x3 plus y sub 1 times the quantity x2, x3 minus y2, y3. And so we have x sub 1 times x sub 2 times y sub 3 plus x sub 1 times y sub 2 times x sub 3 plus y sub 1 times x sub 2 times x sub 3 minus y sub 1 times y sub 2 times y sub 3. Again, we're going to group the two terms in the uh, center and the uh, two outer terms, and so we have x sub 1 times x sub 2 times y sub 3 minus y sub 1 times y sub 2 times y sub 3 plus the quantity x sub 1 times y sub 2 times x sub 3 plus y sub 1 times x sub 2 times x sub 3. So out of the first uh, term we'll factor out 
uh, y sub 3, and so we have x sub 1 times x sub 3, correction, times x sub 2, minus y sub 1 times y sub 2 times uh, y sub 3, plus the quantity x sub 1 y sub 2 plus y sub 1 times x sub 2 all times x sub 3. And so we can now recognize that this is the imaginary part of the product of the quantity z1, z2 with the number z3. So the real and imaginary parts are the same, and so we have that the product of z sub 1 with the quantity z2 times z3 is the same as the product of the quantity z1, z2 with z3. So again, uh, multiplication is associative uh, over the complex numbers, and so uh, it does not matter how we group them, and so we can omit the parentheses entirely. All right? So uh, as a corollary of several of the uh, results we have developed, we will look at the uh, modulus of a product. So corollary, let z sub i be a complex number, then the modulus of the product of z1, z2 is the product of the moduli of z1 and z2. All right, so proof. The square of the modulus of the product of z1, z2 is the product of z1, z2 with its conjugate, z1, z2 conjugate, that is the conjugate of the product. So as the uh, conjugate of a product is the product of conjugates, we have z1 times z2 times the conjugate of z1 times the conjugate of z2. Because multiplication is commutative, it does not matter uh, the order, so we can switch the order uh, of these two terms in the center. And so we have z1 times the conjugate of z1 times z2 times the conjugate of z2. And because multiplication is associative, it doesn't matter how we uh, group the terms, so we can look at the first two terms and the last two terms as a uh, pair, uh, as two pairs. And so z1 times its conjugate is the square of the modulus of z1, and z2 times its conjugate is the square of the modulus of z2. So if we now take the square root, we have that the square root of the modulus of the product of z1 and z2 squared is equal to the square root of the product of the modulus of z1 squared with the modulus of z2 squared. Now, uh, as every uh, complex number, the modulus of that complex number is a non-negative real number, we have that the square of the modulus is also non-negative for every complex number z. So the square root uh, of a square is the positive non-negative value, uh, the modulus of z1 times z2. The square root of the product of the square of the two moduli uh, is the product of the square root of the modulus of z sub 1 squared with the square root of the modulus of z sub 2 squared. And so this is the modulus of z sub 1 times the modulus of z sub 2. Okay, so in this lecture we have looked at the complex numbers as an algebraic extension of the reals. And as an algebraic extension of the reals, we have demonstrated that the uh, algebra of the complex numbers is identical to the algebra of the reals. In particular, we can add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. Uh, in addition, the uh, operations of addition and multiplication over the complex numbers are uh, associative and commutative. Both are associative and commutative, just as they are for real numbers. And the uh, distributive property holds in the complex numbers, just as it does in the real numbers. So uh, we now need to focus on some of the differences between the complex numbers and the reals. And as we will see, these differences have uh, nothing to do with the algebra, uh, but but more to do with the geometry. Uh, so the first thing to notice is that the dimension of a real number is 1, 
That is, uh, every real number is a one-dimensional object, while the dimension of a complex number is two, since as an algebraic extension of the real numbers, uh, in this case, the algebraic extension is equivalent to treating the complex numbers as a vector space over R. Uh, that is, uh, C is an ordered pair of real numbers, which is R squared. Another thing to notice is that the uh, set of real numbers with the relation less than or equal is a total ordering or is a totally ordered set. That is, for every two uh, real numbers, R1 and R2, either R1 is less than or equal to R2 or R2 is less than or equal to R1. Every uh, real number is, every pair of real numbers is comparable. And if both R1 is less than or equal to R2 and R2 is less than or equal to R1, then R1 is equal to R2. Now, uh, in contrast, the set of complex numbers with the relation less than or equal to is a poset, a partially ordered set. Uh, two complex numbers are comparable only if both are real. Uh, it makes no sense in general to say that a complex number z is less than or equal to a second complex number uh, z sub 2. Uh, so again, two complex numbers are comparable uh, with the relation less than or equal to. Uh, only if both are real. However, we can compare the moduli. So, for every pair of complex numbers, z1 and z2, either the modulus of z sub 1 is less than or equal to the modulus of z sub 2, or the modulus of z sub 2 is less than or equal to the modulus of z sub 1. So uh, we, each pair of, uh, for each pair of complex numbers, uh, their moduli are comparable. Uh, and if both the modulus of z sub 1 is less than or equal to the modulus of z sub 2, and the modulus of z sub 2 is less than or equal to the modulus of z sub 1, then the two moduli are equal. However, this equality, the equality of the moduli, does not imply that the two complex numbers are the same. Now, for any pair of real numbers, R1 and R2, if the absolute value of the two real numbers are equal, then either R sub 1 is equal to R sub 2, or R sub 1 is equal to the opposite of R sub 2. That is, uh, if the absolute value of two real numbers are equal, then the two real numbers are either the same number or they are uh, additive inverses of one another. And these two uh, conditions are mutually exclusive uh, for any real number different from zero, because uh, in the case of zero, zero is its own additive inverse. Now, in in contrast, uh, the uh, complex numbers, every complex number on the circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared has the same uh, modulus, and that modulus is the square root of r squared, or 
R. So these are uh, differences between the complex numbers and the real numbers, and uh, as stated, these differences are not algebraic in nature, but rather uh, geometric in nature. So we'll end here today. Uh, next time we will look at the trigonometric and uh, exponential form of complex numbers. I hope you have enjoyed the seventh lecture. Thanks for watching.